You're listening to The Swingdom, the champion podcast of the year. Two guys, 28 clubs, zero putts given, with your hosts, Ben Ridner and Gunnar Kane. Good, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, citizens of The Swingdom. Hope y'all are having a nice midweek, mid-time, mid-feel-good situation. Yeah. I am Ben. Um, <laughs> I'm your host. I'm here with my best golfing buddy, Gunner. Uh, That's me. Yeah. We're going to be talking about, guess what? Golf. Golf. This is the swingdom where we talk about everything under the swingdom of golf. We're going to be doing a bit of news. We're going to get our picks in for the Rism Classic. No, that is not a Wu-Tang rapper. Do you know what RSM stands for? Uh, I don't. I'm not like, you don't have to. You can just say no. <laughs> it, it's... Uh, the Ritual Sangria Masquerade. It doesn't, it doesn't tell you when you, when you pull it up, it's partnered with H&R Block. It's like a, it's... They're a computer an thing? Account, it's an accounting. It's a... Oh, you mean it's just another American company with money to throw away? Good. That's right. Amazing. <laughs> it's, I don't know what it stands for. It's not telling me anyway. Look, this is what I'm going to say. I understand it's the week after the Masters, and I love that. That's my favorite. You love that it's after the Masters? That's fine. Okay. I want to know what the purse is. The purse is 6.6. Just make it. If you have $6.6 million to give away to a golfer, just make it 10. Just, just get make... everybody in there. Yeah. Like if I was the RSM <laughs> Classic, I'd be like, I, wait, I paid $6.6 $6 million towards this purse, and I don't even get to hang out with Dustin? No. PGA is like, well, you know, like Dustin doesn't show up for less than a $10 million purse. No. Or unless you watch that trophy. If I, was, if I was DJ, I wouldn't either. No. No. I'm so high on Dustin Johnson all of a sudden. I know. <laughs> Who do you think? Wait, okay, the number one question. Who's worn the green jacket more? Dustin or Paulina? Uh, Wayne. That's Wayne? <laughs> <laughs> you think Wayne's just like, can I sneak it on? Can I please I just... I think this is... I think this is what happened. They took Dustin and, and Wayne Gretzky took that picture where DJ is wearing the green jacket and the great one is wearing the bib, right? Was that Austin's bib? Yeah. That's Austin's jumpsuit. Okay. And what the deal was, he said, I'll wear this and you can post it on social media. The boiler suit. Yeah. I'll wear this. I'm the greatest hockey player to ever live. Ever. Ever, ever. ever touch ever touch an ice cube. And you will never wear that green jacket after this goes live. And I am wearing this green jacket until yeah. you have to walk back into Georgia in six months. Can we talk about that real quick? The work that Dustin Johnson had to put in and the – the drive that Dustin Johnson has had for the past 36 years, I guess he was 10 when he had this dream. So 26 years to get that green jacket on and he only gets to wear it for six months. Yeah. That's a bummer. Yeah. That's a bummer. I mean, no, to be fair, he, I think, I imagine he gets to keep it for the full year. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure he does. But he doesn't um, get the full year celebration of going out and wearing the green jacket and hitting balls off in tall buildings. And No, but can I just say that DJ's golf over the last five months has been some of the best golf we've ever seen? It's the, it's the best golf I think maybe ever played. He's just so I would say sort of like Sands Tiger and maybe Jordan Spieth in 15. Mm-hmm. I don't, you know, I don't know though, because I know that like, what I'm saying is like, I know your stats might say something different, but like Jordan Spieth winning three of the four is like the mm -hmm. best golf I've ever seen in my lifetime. Cause I wasn't really paying attention to golf when Tiger was, I was like nine and 10 years old in 96 and 97. Mm -hmm. I'm a youngin. Um, you were even younger. Yeah. 
Um, so no, like the last, like basically from the return of golf through the FedEx cup through to this is right. DJ was top, top four in at the, at the USGA. Mm hmm wins the FedEx cup, wins two of the three playoff events of the FedEx cup comes in second in the second one. Like it's at the BMW. Did he win the BMW? Yes. Yeah. So then the other one that he came in second in, so he got first, second, first wins the FedEx cup, $10 million shows up a month and a half later to win the masters. That's amazing. He, this is one of the, Dustin Johnson has been one of those players that, when they show up on the golf course, nobody has a chance. Nobody has a chance. And I yeah. picked against him because I thought, you can't keep this up. Yeah. And I said, the preview show of the Masters, he can't get it done. Mm -hmm. And he has the lowest score in a major. Yeah. And do you think blew, that's gonna? Do you think that's gonna come with an asterisk that that was like the fall major? That was the fall Masters. No, because you know what he's gonna do. He's gonna show up at the next Masters and keep yeah. the damn jacket. Yeah, he is favored to win the next <laughs> Masters, which is just incredible. Um, the only like there's a, there's a few bit of news. Um, Bill Haas is it Bill Haas? It is Bill Haas. He's got the COVID. Ugh. Terrible. Davis Love the Third is like he's hosting the RSM Classic, so he's not playing in it. So Davis Love the Third and Zach Johnson are both residents of Seaside. Uh, okay. Resort. Yeah. So that makes sense. Yeah. And then you know what else I saw that the PGA Tour starting this week at the RSM is allowing um is allowing physical therapy equipment to be used during play oh wow okay like, so you can apply those like those acoustic guns do you know those those yeah, hammer yeah. guns yeah the thera you, guns or whatever they are yeah you can I, you can apply that that you can apply i just apply. had i just had a saw like i just had a jigsaw and then i just bought the attachments for ten dollars Bang, 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 bang. And now, and now I'm a professional athlete. That's it. That's all you need. That's it. That's all you need. You just screw a cue ball on the end of it. Yeah. Bang, 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 bang. Exactly. <laughs> um, and then for me, I think the biggest news that's come out this week is uh, Cobra is coming out with a, a putter. A five hundred dollar putter. Let's I thought it was three hundred and fifty dollar putter, but it's five hundred dollar. There's only five hundred of them made. Oh, that explains the price. Because I'm looking at it. Yeah. So what it is? So they've done that step design on the face where it it's, goes from four degrees down. They've to collaborated one with sick. With sick, yeah. yeah. And then, and then the whole back insert is three D printed, which, whatever. Which, no, no, which, it's not whatever. Like, which, 10 years ago, when 3D printers were expensive, I would have cared about. The thing, so it's, I don't know, I, like, I would love to send an email over to Cobra and be like, can you please explain this to me? Because, mm -hmm. like, they're like, okay, we've collaborated with Six, so they've got the, they've got the four, three, two, one degree face. Mm -hmm. So, like, eat, if you're not 100% sure where the ball is in your stance, like, if you're not, Right. If you're Bryson and you're not sure like how you're hitting down on the ball for some reason, even though he's a professional golfer, like because it steps down, it means you get like the perfect stroke every time, even though it has nothing to do with your stroke. It just means you get the perfect contact with the ball every time. I don't know. I like, I think it's, a, I think it's a gimmicky idea. Now I, I know this, the stepped face. It's not really stepped. It's just transitioned. Yeah. But I know the face there is something to the face, but they didn't even, it's not even like a, a arm lock putter, you know, it's, no. it's just a putter. And my problem is, is I play with a Scotty Cameron. Okay. Yeah. That's an expensive putter. My son plays with a $400. Scotty Cameron. Yeah. It's a $400, That's a $400 putter. putter. Yeah. When you haven't made a putter in 25 years. Yeah. And now you're like 500 bucks, please. 
Well, so there's uh, a guy down Cobra, the street for me who has he's know. got a he's got a Cobra Blade putter, and I was like, how he's like mid nineties. Yeah, I messaged him. I was like, how old is your putter? As soon as this one came out. Um, so yeah, so number like I was then confused because I was like, oh, like maybe the whole putter is 3D printed. No. And then I was like, wait, you can't 3D print steel. That's not how steel works. <laughs> like, it's you just can't just slip like, in the back. It yeah. was just yeah, it's the thing in the back. And the thing is, is like if it was open source and they can send you those dimensions and you can make your own 3D printed inserts based on like your own engineering development or like your own psyche. Like, like what I was thinking is like, you'd be able to do it and then basically like put like small, like lead pine derby weights mm -hmm. like in it so that you can adjust the weight of the putter where you want it to be, where you want it to be. But the thing is now is everybody's got a 3D printer. So unless it's, it's open source, it's not really that cool. No. And, and like, I yeah. guess you could, I guess you can pull the slip out and scan it but those scanners are astronomical yeah and, and and i get the concept right it's gonna lower the weight and provide the same structural stability i get that i get that bit I, of it this is what i don't this is this is the thing that boggles my mind right like i get structural stability when you have a driver because like you're making it out of carbon fiber with like a thin steel or chrome or whatever face mm -hmm. it's gonna have and then you, um, and then like you're swinging at the golf ball as hard as you can. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't understand why, like, I understand stability because you're trying to get an even stroke. I don't understand like strengthening it. Like, oh, like, well, you know, we put in this insert, it's going to strengthen the, it's like, no, like you're, when you're putting, you're, you're, it's 15 mile an hour, maybe. And that's really fast. Yeah, I guess the the lighter the the lighter the club, the more feel you get, and that's probably what they're going for. But the lighter the club, the harder you have to hit to make it go a distance. Yeah, I was gonna say like my, the club that I have that's actually like that I have the most feel in is my Scotty Cameron mm -hmm. Bullseye, and the reason there's nothing there. The reason is like it's it's really heavy. It's a really heavy putter. Like it's heavier than my Cleveland blade. It might be as heavy as your, as your Scotty Cameron. Cause it's just um, a solid block of steel. <laughs> no, the, my, so I have an older Titleist. I have an Akushnet bullseye, the first model. This thing is so heavy. I've seen those older Akushnets. I mean like this thing is twice as heavy as an Akushnet. Oh, it is. Yeah. I like, see. I it's played it's really heavy. Anymore. And the reason it has so much feel is because like it's balanced so well down like the middle if you're looking down on it mm -hmm. that if you don't hit the perfect point just in front of where like the shaft line is mm -hmm. you get a wobble like you feel like you it's like you when you hit it. the toe like you it's like hitting the toe it's like hitting the heel you really feel it um mm -hmm. so yeah so yeah so i'm just like i i would love it if it was open source oh the other thing that makes it at 350 dollars or or 500 dollars or whatever is it's got an arcos grip okay <laughs> i don't like arc like i'm gonna we're gonna do i'm gonna do a review on arco soon because i have it uh -huh. and i've spent lord knows way too much money on it mm -hmm. the thing is is like they want to get you into these arcos contracts so like arcos is like well we'll give cobra the grips for free mm -hmm. and then like the average golfer changes their grips that probably once every four or five years idiots i yeah i know you're supposed to do it more than that right so let's I'll do just it do, twice I'll just do a this year quickly i just do this let me just do this quickly right so i got my cobra clubs with arcos in it mm -hmm. the first year arcos was free the second mm -hmm. year it was a hundred dollars arcos is a hundred dollars a year no thanks right number two like you can't you either have to get the sensors, which cost $200, or you can get like, so I've got the Lambkin Crossline Grips, mm -hmm. which I got for $150, even though like now I think they retail for, for 13 grips, it's $250. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like golf pride. It's like high, and it's not even, it's higher than golf pride numbers because they have this bit of technology in it. But where they get you is it's $100 a year. And so they're like, oh, if you buy a Cobra driver and it's got the Cobra Connect in it, 
Mm-hmm. Like you'll like using it this like for this year and then you'll be too lazy to stop using it and you'll just keep paying money because you're an idiot, which I am. So thank you. Well, here's, I didn't call you an idiot for using Arcos. I called I you did. an idiot. I called all those self condemnation. I called all those people who wait four years to change. Their, I change my grips twice a year and yeah. we change Gavin's grips twice a year because yeah. they wear out. Yeah. And it's a, it's a game changer when you get new grips. Yes. Um, what, I can see the problem. I don't need Arcos. And this is me. I don't need Arcos to tell me, wow, you're only hitting your eight iron 150 yards. Yeah, I am. That's my stock yardage for my eight iron. Yeah. And you know what? That's okay. Because <laughs> I'm better than 99% of the people using Arcos to let them know yeah. your stock yardage is only 150 yards with your yeah. eight iron. Yeah. That's okay. I can see my problem. I don't need Arcos on my putter to tell me, hey, you missed that putt. <laughs> And no, I mean, I like what it, what it basically does is it like it convinces you that you need help in the areas you already know you need help in. So yeah, like you just I, have it on a spreadsheet now. <laughs> I just ha- like I have it, and it's like it's like you miss seventy percent of your approach shots short, and I'm like, yeah, it's because I think I'm a big strong dude, and then I hit it like a tiny bit fat. <laughs> but what it doesn't say, and this is what really annoys me, what it doesn't say is like club up. Yeah. Like you still have to figure that out on your own, which I know isn't rocket science, but it's still like, you know, it's like, a, like for me, it's like, I'm 150 yards out. I'm like, I'm like, that's, that's a, that's a, that's a hard nine iron or, a, or an like, do I want to hit a hard nine iron, get the front of the green mm-hmm. or do I want to hit like a regular eight iron and be oh like, and, and be on the back side of the green, but still be on the green. Right. And I'm always thinking like, oh, I'll muscle this up like 155 right to the pin. And then you, you, you know, you what, re- you like, know what you really kills you is when you, you don't you, think about the lie of the ball. You don't think of like the wind and you're just sort of like 155. That's like, that's my yardage. That's what the phone is telling me. You know what I'm, really kills you is when you muscle that nine iron and you pick it real clean and you get it so close and it spins back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you're like, so, oh, if I soft eight iron that would have been great yeah and it's like the thing is if you pay attention to your own golf rounds enough like it's it's obvious for it's what it is it's for like the high handicappers who don't know what to look for Mm -hmm. but you know what you should do if you're a high handicapper and you don't know what to look for in your golf game learn send us an email send us an email i'll help you out and we'll tell you this is my favorite it's work my on, favorite part about golf. Work on lag putting from work on lag putting from from forty feet. Work on right. putting from inside six feet. Do not work on your twenty foot putts because no. your lag putting will help you with that. You want to be ninety five percent from inside five feet. Yeah, like that's what you want to do. When you're hitting your approach shots into the green, don't worry about your yardages. Like, know your yardage, know your club, but realize where you're – like, are you chipping from the left more, most of the time? Are you chipping from the front? Like, for me, I'm chipping from the left or from the front, mm-hmm. and it's because I under club, or if it's like – if it's my pitching wedge or my nine iron, I like, I'm thinking I'm hitting a draw, and I just like – I just like slightly pull hook it left. And that's what happens. Yeah. If it's like an eight iron or higher, it's an eight iron or, or higher, like eight, like eight, seven, six, five. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's usually short and to the right. And that's because like, again, I've under clubbed and I've push faded it. Yeah. And like, that's what I, that's what I need to work on. And then my driver, you know, God help me with my driver. Everybody knows that my driver is miserable, especially if you've been checking out Twitch and YouTube, you know, it's just the worst. You get lucky. Yeah, oh, I, sh- I went. I played. A, I played a golf course in Portland, Oregon last night. Mm. Yeah, it was beautiful. The flight was was lovely. Uh, <laughs> uh, East East Moreland Golf Course, and I shot eleven over. Wow, which is pretty solid. I'm at ten point four handicap, so I played it to my handicap, mm-hmm. and it was a tree lined. It was like a gust of tree lined golf course. Wow, and I still played it to eleven, and so I was really really happy with that. Very cool. That's the news. That's all of it. That's all the news. You want to do a read? Yeah. All right. 
It's time for us to put down our bag and hear from our sponsors. There's the beauty. And Ben. Oh, I thought you were talking about me. Oh, look at that. Ladies and gentlemen, citizens of the swingdom, the Cobra King MIM 56 degree sand wedge in Augusta laden colors and design. Vintage finish. It's going to rust, but you're going to love it. Hey, this club. Oh, I want it so bad. Just give it to me. I want to give it to you. I want to have it so bad. I want Gavin to win it. <laughs> KBS. And, then can, and then you can steal it from him like you do all those other things that I gave him. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Augusta Green Grip. This is great. Yeah. Go on our. But guess what this comes with? What? Arcos. A hundred dollars worth of pain. Pain. No, you don't need to use the Arcos. But what you do need to do is you need to go to our Instagram, follow us, tag some mates in there. I'm going all uh, European on you. Yeah. Tag some mates, uh, three of them. Uh, like, like and subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel. Yep. And check, check out Twitch and Hot Mike. Yeah, you got a chance to win. We're going to be giving this away once we hit 1,000. Luckily – a thousand. A thousand YouTube subscribers or 5,000. 7,000. Uh, 10,000. A million. A million Instagram followers. No, so go on Instagram and YouTube, like and subscribe, like the post, tag your friends, share it, get the word out there. Everybody has a chance to win. Yeah. Uh, this is a great club. And, you know, we have six more months to be giving this away because we have the Masters coming up. I know. <laughs> it's like. If this I don't get rid great. of this club soon, it's yeah. I mean, I think I'm also gonna I'm also gonna send him a box of our logoed golf balls. Are you? Have you gotten the mail in? yet? I have gotten the mail, and I wanted to do. I haven't opened it because. But I I tell you, let me let me tell you why. Because customs opened it, and so I wanted to open it and be surprised but customs kind of ruined the surprise for me because <laughs> they write they write on the custom sticker what's in the box exactly exactly oh, okay. the box so i was like screw you customs so i need to now forget what's in the box no I took we're the gonna, after, after this after this commercial break read Gunner's going to go get that box and he's going to open it on the podcast oh that's perfect because what i was going to do was do a box opening. Yeah, the kids love that kind of stuff. Yeah, we'll do a box opening on the podcast. Ready? Back to the show. <laughs> and now to your hosts, Ben Ridner and Gunner Kane. We get we get way too excited in those reads. I'm glad we pre-record them. That's right. Yeah. No, especially at like seven o'clock in the morning. Seven o'clock. Right. Let's get to the RSM championship. Let's do it. Classic. I did it. I did, I messed up the name. The RSM Classic. The uh, Rism Championship. The R to the S to the M. Uh, in St. Simon Islands, Georgia. Yep. The PGA Tour said, hey, we're here. We're staying. Let's do it. <laughs> uh, Speaking of the PGA, did you, get the, did you get the PGA email yesterday about how do, how do you feel the PGA is doing in terms of – Yes, uh, I did. I'm not, I'm not getting into it. I'm not, I've already said uh, my views are so public. I'm just going to link them to our like past eight episodes yeah. and say, find out yourself how I feel about this. I filled it Clowns. in and I was just sort of like, everything was a five and under. They're, they're going to know that I'm upset with them. All right. So this is a brand new golf course. It's only 10 years old. Yeah. Um, First time on tour. No, no, no. It's second, second or third time. Okay. Um, yeah, there's two courses. It's the sea, uh, the seaside course. This is a Sea Island Golf Club. It's the yeah. seaside course and the plantation course. The seaside course. Can I just say publicly that you don't like the way they? Fl it's a. I don't think it's a. I don't think it's a fair way to assess a tournament with two courses. Yeah, and well, also though, like I just don't. I don't think anything should be called the plantation anymore. No, 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 not at all. But so. a plantation is a thing. It's just, it shouldn't be the name of a thing. 
And I mean, the thing is, a plantation in Georgia brings up very, very specific mental images. Yeah, and they only built it ten years ago, so yeah, that's your Georgia. So that's it. That's very quickly like my. There you go. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so par seventy, just over seven thousand yards. They're both just over seven thousand yards. Yeah. Par seventy for the seaside course. Par seventy two for the plantation course. Um, it's a stroke play event. Six point six million dollars. Um, your tournament record is 260, 22 under by Kevin Kisner back in 2015. Yep. Um, and the defending champion is Tyler Duncan. Very cool. So, yeah, I, well, I'm impressed with this course only because it's got some, it has some, you know, players in here. I didn't expect to Day, it's but got I a think, few. It's got a few players. It has a few, but I, I think I think what happened was they said, "Wow, I like Georgia. I'm staying. The weather's still warm. <laughs> hey, I've got a chance of winning else. another twenty five thousand <laughs> if I make the cut. Why not?" That's right. Uh, yeah. Do you have anything about this course? So I've got a question. Yes. All right. So like they alternate course. So like you play the plantation course one day, you play the seaside course the next day. Mm -hmm. What happens on Saturday and Sunday? Does everybody like, does everybody who makes the cut play one and then the other? Yes. Or is it, is it, but is it alternating? Is it like only half play one and half play the other? Or does like, will the seaside course be empty on Saturday and be the Sunday course? I believe it still alternates. Okay. It just makes it a little bit harder to watch. Yeah, and I don't like I don't so the best the only time I've seen it done really well with two different courses was the Augusta Women's Amateur where they played Augusta Country Club. Yeah. And um whoever made the cut got to go play Augusta National. That's the only time I've seen yeah. using two courses acceptable. Mm-hmm. The rest of it's trash. Stop doing this. Stop doing this alternating thing. If you're going to do that, do it Do it just like that. I would also say if I was a member of Sea Island, I'd be super pissed that, like, both of the courses had to be yeah, in PGA you're condition. Two courses. You've shut no. the entire eh, – it's terrible. Get it out of here. But the thing is, it's not like, oh, like, they've shut it down for four days. It's like they will shut them down for six weeks. Yeah. Maybe Makes not sense. here, but it's still stupid. Just don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. All right. That's how I feel, PGA. All right. Other than that, no, I think like again, like if I was, I also think the cor- these two courses should be more comparable. Yeah. Like a seventy-one. Uh, sorry, par seventy and a par seventy-two. And they're only fifty some odd yards different. Yeah. It's silly. Don't play with me. Don't you mess with my emotions like that. All right, you ready to make some? You ready to make some picks here? Yeah, I'm going to make my picks first, all three of them. Mm-mm. Okay, fine. Then I won't. But that was a good talk. Who goes first? You went first at the Masters. All right, go ahead. But I was supposed to go first, so oh, I got two picks. Go okay. So you go first. Webb Simpson. Gah! He was my alternate. He was like my alternate four. Really? Yeah. I think Webb Simpson across the board has the best chance to win this. And I don't even think it's close. Really? Yeah. All the data says he's got like a, now I should be clear with data and golf. Mm-hmm. It's a very small numbers. Yeah. And they're all very close to each other. Yeah. So when, so all the numbers I've looked at, Webb Simpson has like an 11% chance to win. Yeah. That's not a big chance, but no, it's but the biggest chance. I was going to say, if you, if, you have a, if you have 10%, 11% of, of 100%, and there's 175 guys out there, you are, you're looking pretty good. Yeah, you know who I'm like, going with. It's some JM. Somebody call the doctor. No, you're not. Because Sung J M is sick, <laughs> so sick, he's my pick. <laughs> I appreciate you. You should have seen your face. I was upset. I just the thing is, right? If you're gonna pick Doc Redman, yeah, you're, you're gonna have to pick him first. Because at some point, I am gonna steal him. 
I know. I'm going to get so mad. Yeah. You're going to be like, Doc, you can't have Doc Redman. But then again, I probably would have gotten really mad if you had picked Sung J.M. first because you know he's my guy. I know he is your guy. I feel like we should do like Doc Redman, Sung J.M. just for like the year and then we still get three picks anyway. I'm down. <laughs> like, like just no matter what, for the rest of the year, if either – But Sung they J. both J. have to be – but they both have to be playing in the tournament. Yeah. Yeah, to have yeah, yeah. an auto pick. Yeah, we'll we'll work on that next week. We'll we'll talk. We'll work that out this during this week for next week. Yeah, it's too late to just make up the rules again. All right. So, what I'm gonna do? I think I think Sung JM's so good. I know. <laughs> I know he is. I'm just. I, the thing is, is I and this is like I just wonder if there's a Masters hangover because the Masters takes so much brain power. And then you get to a course like this where it's two different courses. Like, I just hope he's not burnt out from the Masters and probably needs a few weeks off, but mm-hmm. it's just trying to go for it anyway. Yeah. No, I, his game is really on, but I know. He, you might be right. I mean, going from Augusta to, to this, he might overplay this course and find yeah. himself in trouble. Yeah. Um, all right. So I am going to actually go with Doc Redman because I feel comfortable with everybody left on my board. Okay. I'm going to go with Doc Redman. Doc Redman is my guy, obviously. Yeah. But he plays really well at these resort courses. And I think yeah. he's, he's, he's going to get a win. And then he's going to say, wow, my game can stack up. And then he's going to go win the players. So that's. Yeah. <laughs> so Doc Redman. That's a Webb good pick. Simpson on my board. You have Sung J.M. Who's your second pick? <sighs> There's so many people I want to make as my second pick. Mm -hmm. I want to pick Russell Henley, Uh but I'm not going to. I want to pick Sebastian Munoz Mm -hmm. because he's been really good. Yeah. But I'm not – is he your pick? Is he your third? Mm -mm. Mm-mm. I want to pick Louis Oosthuizen because he had a great first two days at the Masters. Mm-hmm. Um, I like Brendan Grace because, like, for coming from the European tour where you play the – like, you, 90% of these courses are resort courses on the European tour. Yeah. Because you're going to, like, the nicest course the country has to offer. So, right. of course, it's going to be, like, at a resort. And there's a lot of countries. Yeah. There's a lot <laughs> of countries. They made a lot of those things when they were picking them out of a hat. All right. Um, oh. But I think I'm going to go with the one and only Fairway Jesus. Mm. Tommy Fleetwood. Okay. Is he in the field? Yes. I have to check now. I'm not going to. Damn. He is. Yeah. I was, was going to say yes either way. Yeah. <laughs> I know he's in the field. I do that much, re- that much research. Tommy Fleetwood. I'm actually filling out my thing now. All right. <sighs> Dang. This is a good – you got a good lineup. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say right now. Yep. <sighs> all right. I'm going to go with an Englishman. I'm going to go with an Englishman. We're Ian gonna go Poulter, with... your favorite, Ian Poulter. I hate Ian Poulter. You love Ian Poulter. Kind of. I also hate him. It's love hate, mostly hate. <laughs> if he gave him. you, if he gave you one of his thirty thousand Ferraris, you'd love him. Yeah, duh. <laughs> I would be appreciative at least. To be fair, if he let you hit a golf ball at one of his Ferraris, like he gets to do, you probably still like him. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> I uh, this, yeah, I'm going Tyrrell Hatton. He's he's got it. He's got it going on. He's not in the field. Yes, he is. No, he isn't. Yes, he is. No, he's not. Yes, he is. I don't believe you. Tyrrell Hatton starting on the seaside course at 10 a.m. What's 10 yeah, a.m. in American? 10 a.m. It's Johnson, this time Luke zone. Donald, Kevin Kisner. Just type in Hatton. What time is 10 o'clock in your country? 10 o'clock. Oh, that's right. Okay. <laughs> They're playing What's in tea Georgia. Time? 10 a.m. Oh, I see him. I see him now. Sorry. He was he was first build. He was first build. Good night. Um That's a good pick. I know. That's a good pick. I don't think he's gonna do well. Okay. But I think it's okay. a good pick. But he's not gonna do well. 
Okay. But it's a good pick. Who's your Who's your third pick? My third pick. And this is like this is a strange one out of left field. Mm-hmm. Actually, it's not. I'm going to go with Sebastian Munoz. All right. He's I, been, he's been killing it on these courses. He's been play he's been playing in in all of these what like what do we call them? Alternates. The PGA Dip. Ferry Tour. Corn Ferry. The the, the, PG, the professional golfers of Ferry Tour. Of, the G League. Regular <laughs> events. Yeah. Regular events. They're cheap yes. events. Sebastian Munoz is a good pick. I know. I can't believe RSM only is only handing out six point six million dollars. What a bunch of cheap skates! I can't believe you got away with your your picks here. I feel like maybe I made bad decisions, but I'm still gonna win. I like Terrell Hatton as a decision. I always like Doc Redman. I, well, no, I don't always like Doc Redman. I just think he's funny, um, he's, and he's done well. He's, he's done really well. Good. But to me, like, I feel like him and Sebastian Munoz are like – Yeah. No, they're, they're very comparable, yeah. 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 And I feel like Russell Henley should have been like – he would have been a good pick. But when mm-hmm. I saw Tommy Fleetwood there, I was just like – he was in the top ten going into Sunday at the Masters. Mm-hmm. Like, I think, he, I think he may have finished the highest at the Masters who may be playing in this tournament. Yeah. So, I want to sort of, like, keep the streak alive. He's one – like, he's one of the – him and I think Terrell Hatton's probably like B level, but I think Tommy Fleetwood is the only like A level. Maybe him and Webb Simpson are the only like A level guys out there. Mm-hmm. No, definitely. I'd say Terrell right. Hatton might be like an A minus. He's if Terrell Hatton gets a few more wins in the U.S., if he becomes like a like a regular on the PGA Tour with some wins and a major, I would say yes. But when Tommy Fleetwood, I think he finished like second in two majors in a row in 2018. Mm-hmm. When Brooks, I know that at Shinnecock he was fighting for the win. Oh yeah, yeah, and I also know that like, I think people are sort of like he's he's floating into that category as like one of the better players to not have a major. Yeah, no, he's, getting, he's getting closer to that. So, really good. Yeah. Um. All right. You ready for long shots and props? Long shots. CT Pan wins. Coming off the top 10 finish at the Masters. Oh, that's right. He's, yeah, okay. Out of nowhere. CT Pan's our guy. As a matter of fact, he's so much our guy. Him and Gavin talk on Instagram. Uh, no way. Yeah. What do you mean talk? <laughs> like they, they talk. Like they message each other? Yeah. Or like they yeah. comment and respond? No, they, they have a message just back and forth. Really Why cool. is he not on the podcast? He's not our friend. Gavin You're just, fired. Where's Gavin? <laughs> Gavin just likes CT Pan a lot. So he tells him like, Merry Christmas. And CT Pan's like, thanks, you too. And then Gavin's like, you did a great, you did a great job at the tournament. And he goes, I appreciate that. I thought, I thought you were about to say thanks, you too. <laughs> no, he goes, I appreciate that. I can't wait for the next one, right? That's just how they talk. That's cool. That's really CT Pan's cool. a good guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I get, uh, we have a couple flags signed by CT Pan from um, – it's not from a tournament. They're just those live under par flags. Yeah. Yeah, so he, you know, mailed us. Mailed no us, way. Uh, some flags, yeah. Oof, dude, yeah, that's we have awesome. Two of them. That that's he's a awesome. great guy. So I have CT Pan to win. He did great at the Masters. Um, top 10. Nobody saw it coming. He tore it up yeah. under the radar. He backdoor uh, Sunday the stuff out of the Masters. Yeah, he was he was one of the lowest players on Sunday. Yeah, uh, I think shot six under at the Masters on a uh, Sunday. That's that's on a nuts. Sunday. That's nuts. <laughs> CT Pan's good. Um, yeah. that's my long shot. What's yours? Okay. <sighs> my long shot. You know a name that like. That's it. Just court, like sort of keeps like creeping up to the front. Hmm. It's Brian Harmon. Yes. And I know that he's playing really well right now. Mm-hmm. So I want to do like top five. He's been top five. I know. I look. If I'm on, if I, do I have to be honest with you all the time? Yes. Okay. Then then Brian Harmon to win, I think is fair. I think it's totally fair. 
<laughs> I think Brian Harmon top five is a little bit unfair, but it's I a little taken, bit unfair because he does get to the top. He does five. get to the top five, yeah. Especially in these resort events. Yeah, I want to see him win. I want to see him be on tour. I want to see the rest of his follically challenged uh, journey. That's right. Follically challenged. Okay. So I did. The thing is, is you see the picture of him now, and he does not have that hair. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember it being that long ago when he had a full head of hair. Like it went horseshoe right. really quickly. It left him. It <laughs> just took off his hat one day and it was just in there. He was just like, it, it was just like, we quit. Oops. <laughs> Look, if you don't win a major, we're leaving one by one. <laughs> All right. That's too mean. We apologize. Anybody out there who's follically challenged. We love you. Just like we love Brian Harmon. Wear, wear more better hats. Just do that. More better. Yep. All right. My prop bet. The winner of this tournament didn't play in the Masters. I might knock my headphones around there. Don't be hateful. How, how many of these guys played in the Masters? I don't know. How so, many? How many of them played in the Masters? Do you want me to change it to did play in the Masters? I don't care. No, because I think that's impossible. But yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd prefer it if you did did play in the Masters because there's only like four of them. All right. <laughs> it's like, I think there's like five or six guys who played in the Masters out of like 170. I don't care. Whatever. You'd be nitpicky. That's fine. Now, now CT Pan's gonna win, and I'm gonna hit on. I'm gonna double hit. On prop bets. I was going to say, I'm going to let you pick, and then whichever one you don't pick, I'm picking the other one. Oh, I'm taking didn't play in the Masters then. <laughs> Fine. Then when CTP, then when CT, when CTP wins, CT Pan wins, I'll be able to rub it in your face. Okay. Okay? All right. Because so I lied. Playing... Like 50 of these guys played in the Masters. Yeah, but like Brian Harmon didn't. Yeah, he did. Did he? Mm-hmm. He was no good. Nope. Oh, did I read something yesterday I forgot to tell you. What? Ricky Fowler is not a lock for next year's Masters. No, and did you notice Ricky Fowler changed his putter? No. To a Fang-style putter from Scotty Cameron? A Fang? Yeah. Yeah, the, the two-pronged putter. Oh, the Futuras, whatever they're called, the Futuras. Yeah, well, the, the – um, uh, Cal – yeah, Callaway calls it a fang. It's oh, a okay. It's a fang or something. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Switched up his putter. About yeah. time. Because right, he, really like, well. he was using a childhood Scotty Cameron, wasn't he? Yeah, from he does the same thing Jordan Spieth did. And I think Bubba Watson uses the same putter he played with in college. Tiger? Tiger. Tiger? Ti <laughs> well, yeah, tiger, <laughs> Tiger's the best one. But, yeah. Yeah, he's not a lock for the Masters. He's got to get on it. Come that's on, it. Rick. That's mild insanity. That Come on, Ricky. Mild insanity. All right. Um, that's all the picks. No, he didn't do scores. Uh, Sorry. 25 under. 22 under. Okay, deal. Um, 59. On which course? Doesn't matter. <laughs> then I'm going to go with 60 on the seaside tation course all right extra did I do their bet? seaside tation i mixed them both together and i had a, a new word that's when you get a ticket at the beach it's a seaside tation extra prop that was extra good that was prop? a good one it was a good one yeah extra <laughs> prop okay the the lowest score of the week is on the plantation course, not on the seaside course. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Let's do that as a double prop. I'll also take that prop. Double prop. I'm not going to write it in. I'm not changing the. <laughs> we both. We're form. both making that prop bet. <laughs> I agree with you. All, All right. right. Also, I think 100% of the players will hit it into a bunker at some point during their careers. Mm hmm. 100%. <laughs> I've never been in a bunker, so. <laughs> <laughs> Any more prop bets you want to make? No, I don't. I actually have to get to work soon.
Yeah, all right. <laughs> you want to do another quick read? Yeah, you can do a read. All right. It's time for us to put down our bag and hear from our sponsors. That is if you can hear. If you can't hear, you should go check out Beltone Hearing Aid Centers of New Jersey. Mm-hmm. Go see Coach Joe. Use the code word GOLF, G-O-L-F. He'll give you a free hearing test. He may even give you a free battery or two for your brand new hearing aid. What? The holidays are coming up. And you want to be able to hear what your grandkids and your family and your kids and the other people's kids and the oven like clock that like tells you when it's done. Yeah. And the television, you want to be able to hear all those things. Maybe even some carolers. Maybe even you might want to hear some carolers. Can you turn off your hearing aids if you don't want to hear? Yes. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So if you change your mind on the carolers halfway through. <laughs> I, would like, I'm, I'm so, I think we should ask Coach Joe, like, if, look, even if I don't need a hearing aid, if I have a hearing aid in and I turn it off, will it stop me from hearing Will things? it cancel the hearing? <laughs> just sort of like, just cancel those sound waves. Um, but yeah, check out Beltone Hearing Aid Centers of New Jersey. Check out any Beltone Hearing Aid Center. You can find them on their web- website, beltone.com. You can search to find the nearest one near you. The nearest one near to you. That's proper English. Um, that's the Queen's English. That's the Queen's English. <laughs> so have fun getting your hearing aid. He puts the goop in your ear and he makes a mold and then they send that off. And then you get a little piece of machinery that helps you hear people that you love and care about this holiday season. Wow, that was sweet. And now to your hosts, Ben Ridner at Gunner Kane. What a great, I'm so glad we pre-record those reads. I like that you make the same joke after all the reads. <laughs> that we pre-record the reads. I just want people to know that we're it's doing more brand. work. I like we, it. We just more work than we have to. <laughs> all right. <laughs> oh, man. I've got a golf club to give away. I've got a golf club to give away. I'm on Twitch. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I'm on YouTube. I'm on all these places. And I'm using the Royal I'm because that also includes Gunner, Cousin Adam, Sound man Dan, my wife Isadora sometimes, whoever's around and wants to be on I those platforms. The royal we. No, no, it's the royal I. Oh, is it the royal we? itself is on. Yes, for sure. I thought it was the royal I. But like when I Maybe said I, both. I just meant like when the queen says like, I am going to take care of the you. swingdom. She doesn't mean like she's going to come take care of you. She means like her people. The yeah, she ain't doing that. She ain't doing that. <laughs> I'm it's like, you come care. over to Buckingham Palace. We'll take real good care of y'all, right? <laughs> they're like, they're like, come on. You're, like, you're going to make the beds? You're going to do biscuits and gravy, Queenie? What's happening? She's like, no, no, I've got people for that. That's sort of what I'm saying. I've got people for that. There you go. <laughs> Gunner's like, you do? I don't know who these people are. Yeah. It's because I lied. I Am don't, I the I don't, people? I don't, people? I don't know. <laughs> oh, my brain is mush. No. Um, no, we're just having fun doing the podcast. So, like I said, if you guys have any questions, concerns, comments, negotiations, tactics, philosophies, social endeavors, engineering propositions, grammatical... Okay. Or numerical phantoms. Sure. Please email Let us. Let us know. Contact well, us in any way. Yeah. We're desperate for your attention. We just, we just want you guys to talk to us the way we, we talk to you. We need attention. <laughs> we need attention. I just want an email. I just want an email that, like, it's like, well, what do you think about Ricky's new putter? And I'm just going to be like, it's 3D printed. Trash. <laughs> I just want to write, they come out with a new putter. Let's just tangent, tangent, right? Tangent, before we say goodbye. They come out with a new putter the week after the Masters. How do you not, how do you use all of the technology that Bryson DeChambeau brags about? 3D printed. I just like, all my muscles are 3D printed after I take a, a protein shake, bro. Like nonstop. Like, how do you not get that putter in their hands for this Masters? I don't know. That's a good question. Like the thing is, if Cobra's Maybe buying in, because it's not good enough. That's that's what I don't get. Like if Cobra's uh-huh. buying in sick technology, which like Bryson is in love with, 
Why wouldn't you make well, like the Bryson they, if, one length putter? If they worked with if they worked with Sick, maybe Sick said you can't put it out because we don't want competition. I don't know. They can do that. I still think like for five hundred quid, I want Bryson DeChambeau's <laughs> name on it. Even though I don't care or like him that much, like I still think right. they should have collaborated with somebody because it looks like a toy putter. It really does. It looks like a gimmicky I toy thought, putter. I thought it was a child's putter until I saw the price, and I was like, "This isn't for kids." I yeah, I sort of thought the same. I was like, "Oh, this will look really cute in like a little Ricky Fowler Jr. set with the orange little hat Ricky head bag." Cover. Little Ricky bag. Yeah. We get little Ricky Potter and Bryson Potters. It'll be amazing. But no. Yeah, no, it's. All right. And on that note, Gunner, thank you for your wonderful time this morning. Thank you for sharing it with me. Thank yes, you for thank being you a part of the Royal Eye. <laughs> Anytime. There is no I in team, but there is a me in awesome. Yep. And that's what we are. We are awesome. <laughs> Can I go now? Can I just, should I just, we just yeah. go? All right. Yeah, have a good day, guys. Enjoy the tournament. Swing them out. Swing them out. To the swing them. Remember, we're just two guys. 28 clubs, zero parts given. Yeah, I got a little tired at the end. Got a little ranty. Mm. So the, the Royal Eye, that's not a real thing? It's a real thing. I just think you're misusing it. Okay. Well, I'll talk to you later. All right. Bye. <laughs>